What's up everybody? Welcome back to Hank Vapes. Today I'm back with another review. I'm reviewing a rebuildable tank atomizer and this is a mini version. This is the Goblin Mini by Ude. Okay, this tank was sent to me for the purpose of review by Origin Vape, originvape.com. Go check them out. Very nice company. Um, the Goblin. This is the mini version. The Goblin Mini. This is the mini version of the Goblin. That came out a, a few months ago, I would say. Um, and this thing is actually really nice. It does have a couple of things that I don't like. It's got one fatal flaw, I guess you can say. Um, but in order to find out what those are, and uh, also to see how to build this thing, and how to fill it, and all that good stuff, we're going to dive down up close and take a better look at the Goblin Mini by Ude. All right, here's the box that the Goblin Mini comes in. Nice, nice little box, not too fancy of packaging. And this was sent to me by Origin Vape out of New York. Great customer service, great selection, fair pricing. And uh, I can't say enough good things about this company. I know I say that a lot. I say it all the time. One other thing I've never really mentioned, they always include some stickers. They've got this one, comes with every order. They also got a little smaller sticker version of this. Um, sometimes they throw in some candies in there and usually a small handwritten note on the receipt. So very nice company there. Origin Vape, check them out if you want to buy something online such as this Goblin Mini. So like I said, this is what it comes in. You just pop open the top. Oops, I had stuff go flying. So the first thing is this little card, a little instruction card. Nothing too in depth, but it shows you how to use the device. And I'm dropping shit like crazy. And here's some specs on the device. Here's what you get in the box. We have our Goblin RTA over here, a spare drip tip over here, which I am missing. My fault, not theirs. And then your bags of goodies. You've got an extra glass section, and then all this comes in the in the bag, this piece had already fallen out. That's your 510 adapter, so we'll leave that one out and I'll show you that. We've got some spare O-rings and some screws. And then we've got this single coil adapter, which I will also show you here in a little bit. It is the Goblin Mini. Very, very nice, very sexy little RTA rebuildable tank. I love, love, love the looks of this device. Starting at the top, we've got our drip tip, a nice glass drip tip. This does come with an extra drip tip. Um, both of them are glass, which is a very good thing, especially if they knew I was going to purchase this, because if you watch my videos or you know me, you know how rough I am on my vape gear. Um, I knew I was going to break one of them, so I was very, very happy to see the second glass drip tip, because I love glass drip tips. I really like them. I never purchase them myself because I always break them. Um, yeah, it happened. Three, four days after having this, I dropped it and the drip tip shattered. So I have my extra one in here now. And you can see inside there is an O-ring. You can see that O-ring inside here, which wraps around the outside of the drip tip and holds it in there nice and tight. Very cool design. Now your other 510 drip tips, they will not fit in here. They're very, very loose. They won't fit at all, but that is what your 510 drip tip adapter is for. Just slap it right in there where your drip tip goes. Adds a little bit of height. Doesn't look too, too bad in my opinion. And then your 510 drip tips will fit in there nice and snug. Now that drip tip is way too big for this device. Uh, something, if you have the Zephyrus, the Zephyrus drip tip would look kind of cool. Maybe without the heat sink. That's a little more form functional. Okay, drip tip adapter is off and the standard is back on. So we'll unscrew here. I'll take this bad boy apart for you. We'll start with the top cap. This is the top cap. We'll go ahead and take the drip tip off. So we've got our top cap and chimney section. You can see the nice O-rings sitting in here to seal your glass. Chimney portion. Here's the other part of the chimney. It does say Ude 
or the Ud logo on one side and Goblin Mini on the other. And of course that would go down here on your build deck. Now this is the smallest, smallest build deck I have ever seen on a rebuildable tank. Check that out. Very, very low profile. Very, very nice design. The build deck here is very, very similar to the Zephyrus, which is also made by Ud. I'll show you that. The posts and everything, the posts and the screws are identical. This is the Zephyrus here. The airflow is a little bit different. And unfortunately, I was really hoping, I was really hoping that the single coil adapter for this would also work in this, but that's not the case because of the airflow. The juice channels appear to be the same. The way they thread on appear to be the same. Um, but other than that, they are a little bit different. Personally, I like the Goblin build deck a lot better. I think it is a little bit easier to work with. Nice big juice channels. In the specs, I believe they said that was four millimeters, and that looks about right. Four millimeters wide here, but down at the bottom, down at the bottom here, you can see it does catch a lot of juice, feeding up your juice channels into your wick and coil. Nice big open airflow. Look at that. Big open airflow, just like the Freak Show. Shaped like the Freak Show. And down here is your adjustable airflow. They call it a pendulum. Not sure why, but you can see here, max airflow, minimum airflow. So to turn the airflow off, you just shut it like that, and you can see it has shut down the airflow. Push it towards max, and you begin to open it up. See that opening up the airflow? I've been running it wide open, just like that. Very cool design for the airflow. Here's your 510 connection, the smooths on, the smooths. The threading on my 510 connection has been very, very smooth. And here's your 510 pin, and it is adjustable. You can adjust it, that's a little bit, it's a little bit far, but you can adjust it to there, I'd say. and. Uh, and then you can use it on a hybrid style mech mod if you so choose. I believe personally that that would be safe. It's not going to push up and your, your center block is still nice and firm. So one thing you probably noticed when we looked at the bottom was that screw and you can also see it there. So that is this device's fatal flaw in my opinion. That is the filling screw very similar to the old K funds. So you get a small flathead screwdriver in there and you you get it unscrewed. It is a flathead so it's a little difficult sometimes it likes to slip off and then the screw likes to fall around just like that. Every time I've taken it out I've dropped it. So there's the screw. It does have a little o-ring on the end to seal the juice in and you fill right through that hole and we'll get into that a little bit more when we fill this sucker up. So to put this back together after you've got a build in it you take your barrel part of your chimney and that will screw onto the build deck here like this once you get it straight very smooth threading you take your glass make sure your o-ring is sitting down in here your glass is cushioned against that o-ring right there hold it in place take your top cap and the upper chimney section will screw into your barrel section also make sure your o-ring is still in the top cap the top cap and the build deck sandwich the glass into those o-rings creating your seal and whatever drip tip you like I'm using this one that's how you put it together now I'll show you how to build it. Okay, the build I like to run in here is just a standard 26 gauge is what I use. 26 gauge. 8 wraps a piece. 
standard micro coils and they go right in the build deck. Now, if you look at the holes in the build deck, they're not super big. I would say you'd have no problems whatsoever with 24 gauge. You may be able to fit some 22 gauge in there if you're only doing dual coils and not putting any one lead, <clears throat> any two leads in the same hole. You could still probably use 22 gauge, but in all honesty, I think that's a little bit much for, for this device. 24 gauge would probably be as big as you want to go. And personally, I've been using 26 gauge. Now the screw heads are a little bit small. It's a little hard to get your screwdriver in there. You definitely need a small Phillips. But this one here isn't too bad and it seems to work pretty well. So we're going to loosen all of these up. And just like is pretty standard, one lead in the negative, one in the positive, skipping a hole like so, and going right over the airflow. And you'll want to build pretty close, pretty close to your posts. Now I'm going to speed this up, and then I'll show you the the finished result. Okay, so that's how my builds normally turn out. I can get them nice and centered. Fairly centered anyway. Pretty close to the build deck, not too far off. Okay, about that height. A couple of millimeters over. And one thing I like to do before I ever fire it, or even go through the trouble wicking, is to put the chimney on and just make sure that Make sure you've got enough clearance there that you're not going to short out on your chimney. And I will be just fine there, although it is very, very close. It will it will be fine. I had to I had to speed that up a little bit and then I just had to do it off camera because it's so hard to build these these little decks on camera like that. Might just give this a little bit more of an adjustment here. Same with this one. All right. After you do your heating and pulsing, you always want to go back through and retighten down your leads because as they heat and swell, sometimes it can loosen your screws back up a bit. So we go down and retighten them. And let's see here. My resistance is going to be 0.4. So 0.4. And they burn nicely. Now I'll show you how to wick this thing up. Okay, I, I really, I totally forgot guys, this is the adapter for single coil. I forgot to do this before I built the device. I'm not going to take my build out, but basically this little silicone down here, that's going to fit right into your airflow slots. Let me show you here if I can focus. Okay, that silicone there in the middle, right here, this will slip right down into your airflow slot, and this will go right into your juice channel. It's very, very easy. You just snap it right into place. Of course, your coil is not going to be there, and then these legs will block off your juice channels from coming up, and this will also block your airflow hole. And you'll get a nice seal, so no juice will leak through here, and also 
blocking off your airflow so all the airflow is directed to the coil that you have built. Very, very nice design. Very, very nice design and a very nice thought to, to include this in here. My only concern with it is going to be the silicone. Is this going to hold up to the heat? That I am not sure of, but being on the opposite side, it may hold up. It may hold up just fine. Okay, I've got some organic cotton here, and I've already pulled off just the, the outer section. That's a little bit, little bit stiffer, a little bit harder, and left the fluffy stuff on the inside. We're going to roll this up. We're going to twist one edge to get it small enough to go through our coils. And then that's exactly what we're going to do. Right on through the coil. And then we'll do the same with the other side. Next thing we want to do is get our scissors in here, put them right up against the build deck as close as we can, and cut the wick just like that I put my scissors right up against the build deck and cut it close and same on this side just like that that's all the cotton we're gonna need the best way I found to wick this without getting any any flooding or any dry hits fold your cotton up like you would on an old-school K fun Put your barrel section on like this. Get the smallest screwdriver you have and then tuck these down towards the juice channels. You can look down this way. You can see where your juice channels are and just tuck your cotton in there like that. The reason I do it this way is because there's no deck underneath to lay the cotton on so you want it to block those juice channels a little bit to keep it from coming up and straight into your juice flow or your airflow holes now we're going to juice this up a bit like that I'm going to take my screwdriver I'm going to work it in there I'm going to work it back no hard to see with the light work it in there into the juice channel a little bit and then back towards the coil same over here and over here and then what that does is it puts just a tiny bit of cotton down in the juice channel and then leaves the rest up top so it's not enough to clog it to keep it from not flowing but it's enough to block it to keep it from flowing too much and then like I showed you earlier we're gonna put our glass section on like this and then our top tank section before we do that we're gonna give it a test fire and it's vaping okay put your glass on then your top screw this down nice and tight but don't crank it too much just enough to hold the glass in place and to seal it and that's that now back to the fatal flaw loosen up this juice hole this screw this thing's gonna fall somewhere like that just hold on to it so you don't lose it now here's the fatal flaw look how tiny that juice hole is you have to use a needle tip bottle or a syringe there is no other way you cannot put a glass tip on here um, like a glass dropper it's just gonna go all over the place and uh, it's gonna be very difficult to pour as well so you need to you have to you know transfer your juice over into a unicorn bottle or something with a needle tip or, uh, or use a syringe so I don't like that but if you have one of these it's very easy stick it in give it a squeeze and she's full and then the hardest part is usually if you don't drop the screw and lose it the hardest part is getting it back in once you get it in place I made that look very easy a lot of times it takes me a couple of tries and there it is it is ready to vape
This thing looks even better when you've got juice in it, especially like a caramel color juice like that. That just looks, that looks very nice to me. Very classy, very stealthy in my opinion. We're going to take this back up top. I'll give you my final thoughts on this device. All right, everybody, that was up close with the Goblin Mini by Ude. Um, overall, I think this is a nice device. I do enjoy using it, but it does have two flaws. Two flaws that I can think of. Maybe three. Maybe three. Um, the, big, the big fatal flaw, as I like to call it, is that fill hole. That tiny screw. Um, in this day and age, I just don't see a point in having a tank with a bottom screw for filling. We're way beyond that. Technology has progressed way beyond that in the vaping industry, and I don't know why, don't know why these manufacturers are still using that. Um, it makes it a little bit of a pain in the ass, and personally, I don't like to have to have a tool just to fill my tank. So when I take this with me, I need to take a screwdriver. Now, I, uh, I've got some of those little screwdrivers with a Phillips on one side, flathead on the other, on a keychain. Uh, I keep it on my key ring, so I've always got a screwdriver on me, so it's not too big of a deal as far as carrying a screwdriver for me personally, but I know for some people that is kind of an issue, um, and it is a pain in the butt. The other little flaw that I can think of is the airflow control, this little hole. Now, the airflow control I love. I think it's a great concept. I love the way, you know, it's got great airflow. It's very easy to, to control. It's easy to see how far closed off you are. That's great. The only, on a, on a box mod like this iStick or another box mod that's bigger than 22 millimeters, not an issue. Here, not an issue. But if you were to put this on a 22 millimeter device, that little, that little leg where your airflow control sticks out, sticks out just like maybe not even a millimeter, but it does stick out some and you might catch your finger on it, your thumb, probably not going to cut you or anything, but could be a bit of an annoyance if you're running it on, say, a mech mod. Uh, but, you know, that's a subjective con. The only other subjective con I can think of is it only holds three mils of juice. But this is a mini. This is a mini. And uh, really, they shrunk down this top cap. They shrunk down the build deck. So I think you're getting more juice in here than than you would have, you know, in a, if it was done in another way. Um, any other... RTAs you have on the market if you build them the same but just shorter you're gonna get less juice than that so that's subjective three mils you do have to fill it quite a bit but it's a mini RTA so you know this isn't something I would take with me on a long haul anyway um, but it's not terrible I guess but three mils of juice is three mils of juice so uh, can I recommend this yes I can recommend this if you're looking for a nice quality RTA. The flavor on this is magnificent. The vapor production is magnificent. Um, like I said, seriously, it's only got a couple of fatal flaws, uh, but I can recommend it. Some people probably aren't going to like it, and it's probably not going to be for some people just because of these small annoyances. Um, but for me, I would buy this device if it was not sent to me for review. I would buy it. So that's the Goblin Mini RTA by Ude. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Go join Kassad.org. Fight for your right to vape. If we don't do this, if you don't do it, nobody will do it for you. Jump on there. Fight for your right to vape. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned. I've got more stuff coming up. And until next time, keep vaping.